Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnius, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Dinosaurs. You know, the game is really, really quiet right now. My dinosaurs are so quiet, in fact, that I'm a little bit worried about them. Hello guys, you uh, you wanna make some noise? Just, you know, just, just a little bit? You usually make noise when I show up, you know? Just, just a little bit? There you go, alright, so, good, good to know- Ooh! Uh, that was scary. But yeah, moving on, so hello everyone, welcome back, Minecraft Dinosaurs once again. So many things to talk about. Hello little Percy, I see you. Yes, you're still alive, that's good to know. Did that probably needs a bigger enclosure? Poor Percy. Today on Minecraft Dinosaurs, I did a, a few things off camera. I chose a sort of a new area to pick out. And, well, let's, uh, actually, we need to go back and see if our egg is ready yet for the Pachycephalosaurus because we're going to be attempting to build our enclosure for Pachycephalosaurus today. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but I was inspired by a design by Poet Plays. You all know who Poet is, of course. And,. We've been playing together recently a bit as well, and yes, very good. Pachycephalosaurus, I am so excited. So, we are going to go try to make our enclosure while I discuss news in space, because once again, there's not any interesting news for, well, there's not any news. Any news would be interesting about dinosaurs. But there's not any interesting news about dinosaurs, so as a result, we're going to be talking about space news again, because like I've said before, tons of news in space, not so much in dinosaurs. Probably because dinosaur stuff is not really that profitable and you can't really get a whole lot of funding to do research and stuff. Alright, so here's what I did. Over here, I wanted to make this a bigger enclosure, so I sort of tried to take down this sand hill, because this sand hill was sort of in our way. In fact. I'm gonna take this and put sand on top of that, so... Ooh, I... I deposited all of my sand! Alright, good to know, good to know. Maybe... There we go. That should be enough. I'm just gonna put this back here. Alright, good enough for me. So this doesn't look very natural, but it's about as natural as I can make the hill look. It's a little bit too steep for random generation, I think. Random generation is a little bit less steep than this, but I did my best. I, I tried. <laughs> so, with that in place, actually I need four more pieces of sand. Dirt. Um... Da -da -da. There. That should be plenty. I deposited all of my sand back in the chest over there, which makes this a little bit difficult. So, I am going to make four pillars for the corners. And these pillars are going to be made of sandstone because this is the desert. And from those, I am going to attempt to make an iron enclosure. Now... It's not going to be all iron, the pillars themselves are going to be made of sandstone. And... The pillars, I think, uh... Now this is, this is the part, so... This is inspired by what Poet Plays did, but I didn't really pay attention to what he was doing, I just watched his episode as usual. So... I'm not really sure how he did this to make it look so good, but we're, we're, we're just gonna fool around with this and see if we can come up with something that looks decent. Huh, that doesn't look too bad. I like that. All right, so that's that's what we'll do. That uh, that was surprisingly easy to just guess at. This probably isn't what Poet did, but it, it looks good enough for me. I like it. All right, very good. So let's do that to all four of our pillars so that they look nice and pretty. And then once these are built, we are going to use our sandstone slabs to make a top and a bottom for the enclosure railing. And then we're going to use the iron bars to fill it in. 
And that is not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, there we go. So while we're doing this, let's go ahead and talk about some of the space news, because space news is amazing. And there is indeed some very large news about supernovas. Those of you who don't know, supernovas are essentially when stars, very large stars that is, not small stars like our sun. Our sun isn't really small, of course, but in terms of stars, it's decently small, so it'll become a white dwarf one day. For those stars which are too... That is not what I wanted to do. For those stars which are too large to become white dwarves, some of them, they, they explode. They go supernova. They basically collapse in upon themselves. They explode in all of their glory, which is uh, soundless, of course, because space does not have any noise. However, it sends off all sorts of wonderful things like visible light, lots and lots of neutrinos, and all sorts of other wonderful things. And... Alright, that's good. Let's see, we have 12 left, which means that we can do 3 higher on each of these. 1, 2, 3, before we run out of sandstone. I think... How big does a Pachycephalosaurus get? I don't, I don't know if this is going to be large enough, actually. We may have to get a little bit more sandstone. But, the reason that we're talking about supernovas is because in a quote-unquote nearby galaxy, Galaxy M M83, love, love the names of galaxies, in the galaxy M83 there was recently a supernova, a star exploding, which we can see because momentarily a single point in the galaxy which we couldn't really see distinctly became brighter than the center of the galaxy. That, my friends, is a star exploding. It's really, really, really bright. Now imagine if Betelgeuse, which is probably the closest star to Earth right now, which is a red giant incapable of exploding in glorious supernova fashion, if that thing, if that thing went supernova as close to Earth as it is, it, we would be fine. We wouldn't, like, die or anything like that, guys, so don't worry. But we would probably be able to see that star, or what was left of the exploded star, the bright flashes and stuff like that, during the daytime, that would be awesome. Now, we're, we're not able to see this in M83 without, say, some sort of telescope or things like that. It's not visible to the naked eye. But Betelgeuse would be, so supernovas are just cool. This is the closest supernova that has gone off near the Earth in quite a while, something like 20 or 30 years. So it's definitely an opportunity for people to do research that they haven't had such an opportunity in quite a while. Wow, that, that could fall at any moment. Um, this is this is important because research, of course, is incredibly vital and important to our continued learning about the universe. And supernovas are something that really, they don't happen very often. Admittedly, like, if you take into account how many stars there are, then yes, they happen all the time, but... It's quite difficult to be there and catch them exploding when they are, so... We, we don't get that many opportunities to study supernovas that are close by, close to... Ooh. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna use my fist, because I do... Oh, I don't want to use my fist. Do I have anything to make? I cannot make a pickaxe out of sandstone, so... Um, how much sandstone? We have 22. I think that's more than enough. Let's let's go ahead and go back. But yeah, all sorts of opportunities to do research. Specifically, some of the research that I'm most interested in is supernovas are generally one of our few chances to check out our neutrino experiments, where neutrinos are constantly passing through the Earth and through us, and generally they don't really react with much, so we don't really see them or evidence of their existence very often. However, if you take, like, really, really big tanks of oil, and you just sort of, like, monitor it, eventually a neutrino... Oh, it's starting to get dark. Maybe we should go home. Eventually, a neutrino will fly through the nucleus of one of the atoms in the oil somewhere, or pure water. I can't remember which one they use. Maybe both. I don't know. But when a neutrino passes through the nucleus of an atom and hits the nucleus, hitting some protons, maybe some neutrons, it releases a tiny, tiny flash of light. A flash of light which you and I would never be able to see, but amazingly accurate and sensitive instruments are able to log that data. And indeed, when we see supernovas happen, we see a surge in neutrino activity in our experiments. 
which means that probably those neutrinos are being emitted by, you know, exploding stars, supernovas. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of uh, what kinds of interesting research is done on the neutrinos from the star. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more about what kind of star went supernova. I think that would be cool. But that is not the only space news. Oh no, my friends. There is also space news which makes the space conspiracy theorists among us go crazy. And <laughs> I, I say this to make fun of people who are space conspiracy theorists. These are the people you may know who say things like we never went to the moon or who say that uh, NASA is hiding aliens. Things like that, or the government is hiding aliens. When I assure you, my friends, if if NASA were hiding aliens, we would know because no one would be able to keep that a secret. Trust me, NASA people are are not that great at keeping secrets, I'm sure, just like any other government agency. Hmm. I do not have any dirt. Do I have any sand? I don't have any sand either. This this was very bad planning on my part. I probably should have prepared just a little bit better. Four. Six should be good, I think. Yes, the news that is making the conspiracy theorists go crazy is the fact that opportunity, not curiosity, mind you, I got confused about that at first, but the rover... Opportunity, which has been on Mars's surface for quite a while, its twin spirit actually became non-functional. It uh, died. Not too... well, it, it was quite a while ago at this point, but its twin, it died, it stopped functioning, it was a sad day. But Opportunity is still, to this day, many, many years after we sent it to Mars, is still currently running, and Opportunity was taking pictures of the Martian surface. And it took a picture of a certain place, and then it looked back not too much later, and it looked again, and the picture had changed. There was something new in the picture. There was a rock where there was not a rock before. Now, usually, <laughs> usually when these sorts of things happen, people, uh... You would think that people would just be like, oh yeah, I, I don't know, maybe something logical happened, like either one, maybe the the rover knocked over a rock with its wheel, because indeed one of the wheels of, of opportunity is not functioning very well, it's sort of broken, it's stuck. So taking that into consideration, when it was running over a rock, maybe it hit a rock and flipped it up and moved it to a different spot. Maybe it was under the rover before, now it's not under the rover, it's beside the rover. That could have happened. Or... Maybe there was a, an impact on Mars. Maybe there was a meteorite which hit the Martian surface not too long ago. And maybe that tiny rock, which is apparently the shape of a donut, a donut rock, maybe that was a piece of the meteorite or a piece of ejecta from another part of the Martian surface not too far away. Because when meteorites hit the Martian surface and also Earth's surface, Regolith and various other rocks and things can be... Can, can, can we do it here? Oh, that, that does not look good. Never mind. Okay, I, I can't take it. I'm, I'm gonna use... I'm gonna use our diamond pickaxe. I know I shouldn't. But I don't have another one and I don't want to go back to our house. So let's see. Should I put it here? I don't know, it seems like that... That wouldn't look too great. Hmm. Alright, so maybe for these I need to... Put this. And then... Do like this. And if I do like that, I should be able to... Yeah. There we go. Pretty sure that's fine. And then up on... Ooh, I'm gonna have to go up there again and place, like, a slab. Hmm. Or maybe I just do three, four. Four of these, and then a slab up there. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I think it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and connect all of these. 
But yeah, so usually people would say something reasonable like that. You know, that's those are the things that I would suggest. That's what I hope most of you would suggest. But uh, apparently, other other people don't don't think this way. Other people like to say things like, "Nope, nope, it's aliens. Aliens are messing with us. Aliens are placing." These, uh, these rocks in the face of our rover because they're like, Aha, look at you, you're using little rovers, you can't even go to Mars yourself. You guys stink at space travel. Let's, oh no. Let's, uh, let's make fun of the humans, basically. So that's what some people are saying, and I would just like to point out that those people make me angry. I'm very happy to know that probably most of you, since you're subscribed to this channel and we talk about science all the time, that... I mean, I certainly hope that you guys don't believe things like that without evidence. Certainly if we ever found aliens and they were like, oh, that's, that's not what I was... Why do I keep making these mistakes? In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do it over here as well, so... So I don't make any more mistakes. But certainly if we found evidence that actual alien beings were doing this and messing with our rovers, I would certainly hope that you would believe it, because evidence works that way. But, um... Uh, it's not what these people are doing, so it makes me sort of upset. But yeah, that, that rock, who knows what it is. We're probably gonna do some experiments on it with Opportunity. I'm not really sure what kind of experiments Opportunity can do. It's not as advanced as Curiosity is, but it, it'll probably examine that rock a bit closer. See if we can figure out if it's a piece of meteorite or not. That would be pretty awesome. Probably the closest we've ever been to a... Uh... Hmm... Closest we've ever been to an impact site on Mars. Let's see, like that? How does that look? I think that looks okay. Alright, very good. So let's continue that. Yeah, and that is basically all of the space news for now. There is one more thing that I would like to talk about, other than saying that, you know, Hypixel continues to be awesome and my new friends that I'm making what? on Hypixel indeed make me very happy and I'm so, so glad to have the opportunity to meet so many interesting people on Hypixel and so many fans and people who are becoming fans. We are all out of sandstone slabs. Oh my goodness. Looks like uh, we need to go get another pickaxe. Because I don't want to ruin our our diamond pickaxe. But yeah, there is one more thing that I wanted to talk about other than Hypixel and Minecraft being awesome and minigames and things like that. I wanted to talk about Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, I know that that's probably a shock to a lot of you. Because uh, generally we don't talk about real life celebrities or real life things very often. Ooh, that bit of lag there. We don't talk about things like that on my channel very often because, you know, we talk about science, we talk about cool things, we talk about awesome stuff. We don't talk about celebrities. However, since I've started using Twit, uh, not Twitch, Twitter, and indeed you guys should definitely go to Twitter, go to at Magnius and follow me because I only have like 336 followers and that, that makes me sad. So you should, you should come and follow me so that we can chat on Twitter, but... On Twitter, now that I'm using it, I've noticed that a few things have been trending recently. Things that make me sort of upset, like Justin Bieber changed my life, and... Uh, F Free Bieber, yeah, Free Bieber. If you were following me on Twitter, you probably saw me tweet to Port Bieber. Now, I have absolutely all the respect in the world for any sort of music artist, and Bieber apparently is very successful as a music artist, and I respect that. That's cool. I think that that's, you know, pretty amazing. I also respect his fans. I think that everyone has the right to choose their own kind of music that they love. And I think that, you know, probably many of you like Justin Bieber because a lot of you were pretty young. And that's Justin Bieber's demographic. And that's cool. You guys should be proud of that. However, I think that a lot about Justin Bieber is overlooked by his fans. Many problems, such as his, his attitude and his behaviors, how he's sort of not really a very good role model for young people. And most recently, the, uh, the problem, apparently, is that he was arrested for drunk driving. Now, drunk 
drunk driving is bad, we all know that this is bad, but when celebrities drunk drive, especially young celebrities, he's not really that young anymore, admittedly, but he's pretty young compared to the rest of us, so when stuff like that happens, people often end up saying silly things, and by silly things I mean they say things like he should not have to pay the consequences for his actions, they say things like, you know, he's just a kid, you know, he doesn't know any better, which is, you know, clearly not true. They say, like, Justin Bieber changed my life, he saved my life because he was there for me when I needed him. And this, this all just comes across to me as being, like, really ridiculous because, I don't know, I think... Uh, the, it's so, so hard for me to accurately express my feelings on drunk driving. I just want to say, first of all, that guys, drunk driving is quite possibly one of the stupidest decisions that you could possibly make. If you value intelligence, which I hope you do, because you're watching this channel and I talk about intelligence and science all the time, if you value logic and reasonable critical thinking skills, you will never in your life step behind the wheel of a car while under the influence of alcohol, because it is quite possibly the most stupid, irresponsible, and dangerous thing you could ever do in your life. I have lost two friends, well, I've... I've lost one friend, she died, and I... got a friend into a car accident, and she will never quite be the same, because, you know, she had a hole in her throat for a long time, she had to go through rehab, she can't walk very well still, she sort of limps. And, uh, her so so social life and her future career options were basically ruined because someone was drunk driving and they hit her car and she ended up in the hospital with very, very serious injuries and she almost died. And another one of my friends did die and she's gone. She was an amazingly intelligent person. I'm not going to say her name, but she also went to university early just like me. And it's it's just, you know, sad. And I, I have no words to describe the sort of anguish that her family and her friends were put through because of these issues so... Yeah, needless to say, when you drunk drive, not only do you take your own life into your hands, but unfortunately, even worse, you put the lives of others in danger, and this is something that I personally can never forgive people for, and as a result, I believe pretty strongly that anyone who does something like that should pay the consequences to the full extent of the law. Justin Bieber, regardless of how many fans he has, he needs to make responsible decisions as to imbibing alcohol. I'm an adult, you guys know that I'm an adult, I can legally drink, and I do drink sometimes. This is something that you should probably all already know, even though we don't really talk about it, because I'm an adult. I have never, ever, ever had a drink and then stepped behind the wheel of a- ow, ow, ow. The wheel of a car. Even, even just one drink. Even just one drink. I just go to sleep wherever I am. I don't go home. Uh, I've never driven. Because, uh, it's bad. It's dangerous. I don't want to kill people. Don't want to kill myself. So, I don't know. I'm just really angry to see people all over Twitter tweeting to, like, Free Bieber and things like that. Because it's just... It's so irresponsible, and it's such a bad idea to try to basically encourage behavior that puts people's lives at risk. It makes me so angry, so upset, and I'm sorry for rambling, but this is something that I feel strongly about. And Minecraft Dinosaurs has always been sort of a bloggy-like type thing for us. I'm gonna kill these creepers so that they- no, 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 oh no. Our beautiful desert is being ruined. There we go. Come on, come on, bring it, bring it! Oh, we're, we're all out of time. I've ranted and rambled for far too long. We will finish this probably next episode. I'll do a lot of it off camera. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on Hypixel. If you're ever on Hypixel, just come to Blitz Lobby 1. That's usually where I'm hanging out when I'm not actively in a game. 
Thank you so much everyone for watching. Look forward to the birth of our Pachycephalosaurus and the naming of our new Compi on the next episode, our Purple Desert Compi. Thank you so much everyone for watching. My name is Magnius, and I will see you next time.